The U.S. Marines, you give them some money, you give them some time, and all of a sudden you have quite possibly the scariest vehicle in military history. And of course, I'm talking about the M1150 Assault Breacher Vehicle. And not only that, the U.S. Marines have even managed to bring this vehicle into combat and use it against enemy opponents. But before we get into all of this, please like the video, it helps out a lot and helps blast this video out to others so they can also learn about the scariest vehicle ever. Okay, so at first glance, this looks like a tank. And it is a tank, but it's not a tank, so let's talk about this. The U.S. Marines in the early 2000s were trying to implement and develop some sort of breacher element for their Marine Corps ranks. And eventually in 2009, all of a sudden we have the assault breacher vehicle where they just took an Abrams tanks and put some cool things on it. We'll start with the back end, and I call it the party mode. This thing comes with two Miklicks on the back of the tank. Miklicks are mine clearing line charges. And essentially a Miklick is a rocket that shoots out a line full of C4 and it clears lanes for tanks and troops. Now when you times that by two, you have a very powerful vehicle with some very powerful assets. Now, as a former combat engineer and someone who has shot many Miklicks, shooting one in one day is already a lot. Now, shooting two on a battlefield against your enemy opponent, that's nuts. Now, when we look at the front of the vehicle, it comes with some pretty cool assets as well. You essentially have a plow system and a stripping system where you can plow the earth and help pick up mines out of the ground. Remember, this is a breaching vehicle, which means it's used on the offensive. And honestly, in the combat engineer world, to breach is essentially a verb, which means you're on the move, you're moving forward and breaching an element. It's also important to note, we can't give all the credit to the US Marines for this entire vehicle because the plow system in the front was actually developed by the United Kingdom. And like most modern day military vehicles, a lot of times you're using assets from other countries, bringing in that technology together to create a super beast of a vehicle. So I talked about the US Marines actually implementing this thing in combat. And the U.S. Marines were so hyped about using this thing in combat, they even have a broadcast dedicated to it. Operation Cobra's anger saw Marines storm the Taliban stronghold of Nauzad in the Helmand province. To support this operation in combat for the very first time is the Corps' new assault breacher vehicle. With limited casualties while taking Nauzad, Marines can continue to protect both Afghan civilians and themselves with the help of new technologies like the assault breacher vehicle. And I want to give you another visual of what this thing actually looks like when being implemented in real combat and in real time. Okay, now that we talked about how great this thing is, we need to talk about some of the negatives. There's a reason why I can hardly find any information about this vehicle and when it was used in combat. It could really only be used for very specific situations. For example, the Marines used this vehicle in the beginning of an offensive against the Taliban in Helmand province. So it makes sense that the Marines were going to bring some breaching assets along with them. Breaching landmines, breaching obstacles, it's a breaching vehicle. But once you breach all the elements and there's nothing else to breach, it's just sitting there. You can't really do too much with it. We also have to understand there's a lot of logistics that come with using tank-like vehicles. Like, for example, the U.S. military doesn't like to leave vehicles behind in case they get blown up or destroyed, so typically vehicles will roll around with wrecker systems. And tanks, when they roll out, they bring their own wreckers to drag them out of battle in case they get blown up. So again, we can only use these things in a very specific situation, and it takes a lot of time and money to actually implement these things into combat. But that is in the context of Afghanistan when these things came out in 2009. Because that was more of a counterterrorism war. The assault breacher vehicle, this thing is more fit for big military conflicts. And you know damn well the US military is observing what is going on with Ukraine and Russia. And if I'm being quite honest, this vehicle would work amazing on that battlefield. Using its Miklicks against Russian minefields, using its plowing elements against Russian tripwires and other obstacles. So I think most of the negatives work against this vehicle in a counterterrorism, unconventional type warfare. But this vehicle for sure will be used in the assets of big military warfare. 
Now, personally, I actually don't know anyone who's ever implemented or used this vehicle in training, and I've worked with a lot of combat engineers who've done a lot of breaching and route clearance type work. So I almost consider these things a little exotic in the combat engineer world. Nonetheless, they are super important assets, and this is something that I would rather have on a battlefield than not have. Because I actually was on a breach team and I was a demolition team leader, and instead of having to run up to an obstacle, I would love to just have a tank and roll up to the obstacle that way. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about the assault breaching vehicle. Please leave a comment, like the video, and subscribe.